Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on installing Windows XP. In this module, we're going to install Windows XP and we're going to learn these requirements from the CompTIA certification 220-601, that's our essentials exam, in section 3.2 where we need to know how to install, configure, optimize, and upgrade operating systems. So we're going to go through a number of these functions, but instead of stepping through these individually and learning about each individual piece, we're going to install Windows XP interactively. So we're going to go through a pre-install checklist. We're going to do an actual installation of Windows XP. We'll verify the installation, and then we'll talk about what we need to do once the operating system is installed. There's a checklist afterwards. So let's step through what we need to know pre-install. The Windows XP minimum requirements and recommended requirements are here on the screen. We need to make sure we have a 233 megahertz machine with at least 64 meg of RAM and at least one and a half gigabytes of hard drive space. What I've done is set up a system that is a virtual machine that's got all of these requirements in there and a little bit more just to make sure we've got a little bit of room in our configuration. We also need to think about the software that we're going to run on this system after we've installed the operating system. So we should list out everything that we've got. This is the same list that we have from our Windows 2000 uh, video, by the way. So we need to list out every piece of software that we use and make sure that it's going to run when we move to Windows XP. Some of the processes that we use in Windows XP may be different than what we've used in other operating systems. Our backup process, the process that we use to connect to network drives, the process that we use to share files, the process that we use to print, some of it might be a little bit different. So let's plan for those backups. We also need to check for compatibility with the software that we're running to make sure it's going to work in Windows XP. We may have bought a version of software that works in Windows 2000. But you may want to check with the manufacturer and say, if I load this same software up in Windows XP, is it going to work? Or do I need to upgrade the software? Or do you even have an option for me? Maybe I need to find a different type of software to do what I need to do. So we want to check for that as well. Let's install Windows XP. I have a virtual machine on my system that has 256 meg of memory in it. I have allocated 2.5 gigabytes of hard drive space. That's well beyond the 1.5 that we have. And I have my Windows uh, XP CD in my drive H, which is a CD-ROM. So I don't need a floppy drive. I don't need a USB key for this. I'm just going to run it directly from the CD-ROM, and we'll see what we've got. And there's some other settings in here. We'll look at those as the operating system loads. So let's start this virtual machine. This is essentially going to power on our virtual machine by clicking on this Start the Virtual Machine option here. So we have now are expecting our computer's hardware configuration, and the Windows Setup program starts up. If you've installed Windows 2000 or you've seen our other video on installing Windows 2000, this looks very similar. The blue screen, the white text, it's loading up some initial files that it needs to start the installation process. What it's really doing is finding out the critical drivers it needs, hard drives, keyboards, mice, so that it can then begin the rest of the installation process. And notice it loads those up pretty quickly. We're running from a CD-ROM, so it goes pretty quick. And it says to set up Windows XP now, we can press Enter. If we're going to repair an existing Windows XP configuration, we can hit R, or we can just stop the whole thing by hitting F3. Well, we want to install Windows, so let's hit Enter. And it gives us this Windows licensing agreement that uh, we want to read through. It's an end user licensing agreement, or EULA, if F8 to agree to it. Escape means I do not agree, and we won't install the software if that's the case. Or we can page down and look through the licensing agreement and read through some of the requirements that we have for keep creating copies of our CD, when we can create copies, how we can, can create copies for archives, how this product's going to work, can we resell it or not. All of those are in the licensing agreement. Well, we agree with all of this, so I'm going to push F8. And it says that we have a uh, existing unpartitioned space. And if we'd like to set up XP on this unpartitioned space, we can hit Enter. If we'd like to create a smaller partition or part of this partition for us, we can hit C and we can choose to put in exactly the size of the partition that we would like. Now in my case, I'm going to hit Escape and go back to this main screen because I'm just going to use the entire 2 gig space for Windows XP. So I'm just going to hit Enter. Now it says that we have created a new partition that fast on this drive. And it says that this is our 2 gig 
disk zero, ID zero on bus zero, it now has to be formatted. We can't do anything until we format the partition. So it's at this point where we have to choose the file type that we're going to use. We can use NTFS, which is our NT file system, or we can use FAT, which is our file allocation table. It's an older type of file system, but FAT, even though it's older, is more compatible with other types of operating systems. If later on we wanted to come onto this hard drive and install another operating system on the same partition, we want to maybe choose FAT so it's more compatible. In our case, since we're also tight on time here, I'm going to quickly format the partition using NTFS so we can take advantage of everything that Microsoft has in their file system. So it says, please wait while well, setup formats the partition. We're going to take the entire 2 gig partition and partition it out and format it. And just that fast, we're at 100%. Now setup is going to look at what's on the disks, check the drive, and then copy over the files that it needs to continue on with the setup process. So you can see in the, the bottom right here, it's copying quite a few files over. And this is almost the same process that Windows 2000 takes. It takes everything that it needs off of that media that we're installing from, copies it all down to the local drive, and then it's going to reboot and use those copied files to finish the installation process. So from this point on, if you're using an installation over a slow network connection or your CD-ROM just doesn't read things very quickly, what you'll find is once you get through this process, everything seems to go a lot faster. Now that it's copied everything over, it looks at the configuration and says, if you've got anything in your floppy drive, take it out. I'm going to restart your computer. You can hit Enter to restart yourself, or it will reboot by itself, and it counts down from that 15-second time frame and then reboots the computer all by itself. And it says, restarting computer, and there we go. It restarts the computer as if we began from scratch. And now we've got a Windows XP Professional splash screen that comes up. It loads up its initial drivers and then presents us with some options that we have for starting up our Windows installation. We've got our blue desktop here. Looks like my mouse driver is working because my mouse is moving around now. And we're just waiting for the setup program to provide us with our first prompt. Look, it's an exciting new look. It starts taking you through the installation process. If you recall the Windows 2000 installation process, wasn't quite this pretty during the installation. So Windows XP was a big step forward with user interfaces. And so you'll find the setup process was the first step in doing that. As it's stepping through this installation, notice that it's giving us an update on how many minutes it will take for this setup to complete, 37 more minutes. That will change depending on how quickly these processes go. And it gives you a little prompt on what it's doing right now. So the first step that the operating system is doing is installing devices. So it's found out what kind of hardware you happen to have and installing the devices for that hardware. When Windows XP was introduced, this was a very important aspect of the operating system that it could recognize as much hardware out there as possible. So it was very important so that you could update or install the software and you were done. There was nothing extra to do at the end of it. It already recognized your printers. It already recognized your mouse, your keyboard, your video card, your audio card, so that you could get running as quickly as possible right after the initial installation. Our first interactive prompt is for the configuration for the region and language options. So it says our format is set to English United States. That's correct, although we could always go into our customize option and change how we would like some of that regional information displayed. We could also go into our text language. Perhaps if we weren't using a US keyboard or we would like to change any of those settings, we could change how our keyboards and our language information is presented. Well, this looks fine for my US configuration in English, so I'll click Next. It now wants me to personalize this version of my Windows operating system software. This is not creating a username that we'll use to log in. This only identifies this particular installation. So we'll put something in here. And now Windows wants to finish the licensing process by adding in our product key. The product key is going to be on your Windows device. And every installation you do needs a product key. Larger organizations have product keys that are assigned for the entire organization and special Windows builds that use that product key. In our case, our product key came on the CD container that had that. There's a yellow piece on the back. And we're just going to type in the product key from that. And if we've typed everything properly, we can click Next and we continue to the next screen. If we type that wrong, it would certainly tell us about it. So now we need to give this a name of this computer. We're going to call this our um, XP um, install. 
And it wants a password to use because it's going to create an initial account for the administrator. The administrator account in Windows has complete access to the machine. So it's very important that we add a password. We don't want everybody to have access to this device on the network. So we'll make sure we add an administrator password right there. Looks like I typed those in right because we got to go to the next screen where it wants to verify the date and time and the time zone that we're in. Well, we're in the Eastern time zone, so I'll choose Eastern there, and I'll make sure that it automatically adjusts my clock for daylight savings changes, and I'll click Next. Our next step is to go through the installation of the network piece. So it's going to install some network options here and then present us with some other things that we can do. We're going to choose some typical settings or custom settings. The typical settings are very typical client for Microsoft networks so that we can connect to other Microsoft networking devices, other Windows XP, Windows 2000, or Vista devices. Our file and print sharing means that we can share files and printers. Our packet schedulers for quality of service, that's what that QoS stands for, because if there are other applications on this that need a higher quality of service, like voice or video, our Microsoft Windows XP comes right out of the box able to do that for us. And the TCP IP transport protocol with automatic addressing, which is exactly what we're doing on our network. We're now going to find out if we want to be a member of a domain or if this needs to be a member of a work group. If you remember from a previous video, this is one of the things we needed to know prior to doing a Windows installation. So we can say that it's not on the network or it's a member of a work group. And uh, the work group that we have here is, is the Pegasus work group. So I'm going to add it to that work group. If I was in a larger enterprise environment, I would almost certainly be in a domain. And a domain administrator would provide us with the information we needed to have this computer become part of the domain. When systems become part of a domain in Microsoft's terms, that means that it can be managed from one central place. And it's very useful in environments that have hundreds or even thousands of computers. Now it's going to start the copy process. So we're going to sit back and watch some of these things go by as it copies through the operating system files. It appears that Windows is finished copying the files that it needs. It's going to install some start menu items and do some other minor settings here to get things up and running. Now that the initial installation files are complete, our Windows system reboots. And now we're starting up Windows XP for the very first time. And it says to improve the appearance of visual elements, Windows will automatically adjust our screen resolution. And that's a, a feature of having Windows automatically find some of the video drivers that are on our system. And that looked good, so I'll click OK to continue. It continues with its initial installation or setup process from the very beginning. Windows gives us a little message saying thank you for purchasing. Let's spend a few minutes setting up your computer. Plays a little music for us. Let's turn Windows down a little bit, shall we? And it says, if we need help, we can click on the question mark. It's going to see if we're connected to the internet. In this case, this virtual machine is connected to the internet. I can connect through my local area network or through a DSL or cable modem. And it talks about some of the options that are available. Uh, let's say that we're going to connect through our local area network, which is how I am connected to this system. I'm going to obtain my IP address in DNS automatically over my network. If you recall, when we initially set up Windows, it was important that we know how we want our networking settings to be. And this is a good example of how we're going to set that up for the first time. If you're in a large enterprise environment, you may have already set up one of those unattended.txt files, so you aren't asked for any of those things. And it says, do you want to activate this copy of Windows right now? And you can choose to activate over the internet now or remind in a few days. I'm actually going to delete this once we're done with it, so I'm not going to activate it. I may want to use this installation at some other time. It says, who's going to use this computer? So for the first time, we need to put a username that we'll use to log into this device. And so I know that I will. So we'll just put my name into that list. And it says, thank you. We are ready to go. We're all done. And we'll click our green arrow and we'll finish our installation process. Our Windows Start song says, welcome. 
So already we know Windows has found the video type that we have. It has found the audio driver that we're running. And everything seems to be working as we would expect at this point. And we are logged in for the first time with my Professor Messer username. It even started my start menu for me automatically. So I would know there were things there that I could start doing on my system. So at this point, we should feel pretty good that the installation that we've put in for our Windows XP is working exactly as we would expect. Now that we've completed the install, there are a few things on our checklist we should probably go through. First, we need to make sure it works. So we've already logged in. We should probably check to make sure our printer is working, that the other pieces of hardware in our computer are working as we would expect. If we just didn't even get booted, there's probably some bigger problems we have to troubleshoot. And so sometimes it's useful to have the computer turn on, have it sit there at the default screen, and let it sit there for a while while all the drivers load and Windows operating system does all of the things that it needs to do to make sure there aren't going to be any problems with that configuration. Now once we've got this piece done, we want to continue finishing the installation of the operating system. We're not done until all the correct service packs are installed. If there are any security updates, we need to make sure the patches are installed for those. If we do need new drivers for our video, for our printer, we need to install those, certainly. And finally, install the applications that we need. We know that we have just started this operating system from scratch. We're going to now need to load the applications that we'll want to use on a day-to-day -day basis. In review, we've done a complete installation of Windows XP from the part where we've begun prior to the install, making our checklist, performing the installation itself, verifying the installation that it's working properly, and doing a post-install checklist of the pieces that we need once we have the operating system installed. We've gone from top to bottom with Windows XP. If you'd like to see more operating system videos, more A-plus training, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.